Welcome to our Ash Wednesday services. Ash Wednesday, of course, is the beginning of Lent, which means springtime. We welcome you to our worship. Uh, this year, we are focusing on the healing stories in the Gospel of Mark. Mark is the prescribed gospel for this year's lectionary reading. Healing because I think we are in need of healing in our country, in the world. We're always need of, in need of healing but I think even more profound during these days. And so we're going to focus on these stories of Jesus healing. Um, as we work our way through Lent, we invite you to share in the Bible studies that will accompany our Wednesday services. <clears throat> I will um, talk a little bit about the theological reflections on Wednesday and then preach about the same text on Sunday. Um, we have devotions, if you would like, from Augsburg that are pre-printed. They're available down by the elevators. We'll be glad to send you one if you'd like. We also will have written devotions from our members that will be sent out in the email blast that are available to you. We welcome you to our worship service. We will be having Holy Communion today as part of our service and invite you uh, to partake in that. So before you start to work, <clears throat> watch the worship service. We invite you to get your communion elements, the bread and the wine or grape juice out at this time. Welcome to our worship.
begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. With each litany petition, the congregation will respond, Holy, Holy God, God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness, Holy, Holy God, God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For longing to have what is not ours, for our hearts that are not at rest with ourselves, Holy, Holy God, God, have mercy, mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships and for unwillingness to see the image of God in others, Holy, Holy God, God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For jealousies that divide families and nations and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, Holy, Holy God, God, have mercy, mercy on us for reluctance in sharing the gifts of God and for carelessness with the fruits of creation, Holy, Holy God, God, have mercy on us. For hurtful words that condemn, for angry deeds that harm, Holy, Holy God, God, have mercy on us. For idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ and for squandering the gifts of love and grace, Holy God, have mercy on us.
Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands, and anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all of who are in need of healing. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, drive away all sickness of body and spirit, Make whole that which is broken, deliver them from the power of evil, and preserve them to true faith. To share in the power of Christ's resurrection, and to serve you with all the saints, now and evermore. Amen. for Ash Wednesday is from the second chapter of St. Mark. It's the story of the healing of the paralytic. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front of the door, and he was speaking to them the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carrying by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowds, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up, and immediately took the mat, and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorifying God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
God's grace and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. We've chosen to do these sermons or these uh, studies on healing during our Wednesdays in Lent, and then we'll do the sermons on Sunday. Um, I think we've, we've come to a significant part in the, the history of our world, history of our country, where healing is especially needed. And this first story of healing is a fascinating story because it's the end of five stories of healing with Jesus, but it's also the transition to the beginning of five controversial stories. And the heart of this story beats with forgiveness, suggesting there's a rhythm between sickness and healing, sin and forgiveness. The authority question is once again raised as it was earlier in chapter one. In the synagogue, God can forgive sins, argues the, uh, argues the scribes. How is it, Jesus, that you dare say our sins are forgiven? But Jesus goes further in demonstrating his rightful heir to the kingdom with these healings in these miracle stories. And oddly enough, it seems strange to the reader, why would Jesus be rejected when he's bringing life, healing, and hope into the world? Instead, he brings controversy. We expect, expect a glowing reception, but he is rejected by those in authority. So we return to our story here in Mark. He returns to Capernaum. So Jesus makes this wide swath around Galilee with these healings, exercising demons, um, uh, healing the woman with the fever. And he's like a traveling Mayo Clinic. And these crowds start following him till he gets home. They are so crowded that you can't even get inside the door. And these friends decide that they're going to bring this paralyzed man. There's four of them. Oddly enough, the gospel writer designates four of them. And this theme, the, the scene almost has comic undertones, especially if you can imagine that the paralytic's reason for being paralyzed may be that he fell off of a roof and here his friends bring him on this roof. And it's this big thatched roof. Uh, un, unlike our roofs, uh, but uh, more like the, you, you might find in Africa, uh, mud and thatch. And so they begin to dig away through, these, um, through this mud and this dirt. And you can imagine what it must be like to be underneath and start to see the roof collapse. The dirt starts to come in. And likely it took them a while to um, make the hole wide enough so that the man in his bed can be lowered slowly down into the room. And the onlookers must be looking up to say, what in the world is going on? This guy's coming from the heavens. But Jesus looks up and he says, for the first time he uses faith as a noun. And he says, look at their faith. He's pointing to the four friends, not to the paralytic, by the way. Look at their faith. Now, the scribes are not said that they actually said these words about Jesus, about blasphemy, but Jesus perceived them. The scribes sometimes get a little bit of a bad rap because of their legal interpretation of the synagogue, but they were the protectors of the faith. They did take their faith seriously. They wanted to protect the integrity of the law, and the law is what was important for our relationship to God. And of course, at heart in the law is forgiveness because the day of atonement was the day of forgiveness. Yom Kippur, uh, still celebrated by our Jewish uh, friends, celebrates the forgiveness via the act of the high priest slaughtering the lamb in the Holy of Holies. So Jesus, then presents the dilemma to the scribes. He says, what's easier? To say your sins are forgiven or stand up and take your mat and walk? Now, at first, we're probably saying, well, it would be harder to take up your mat and walk. But think about forgiveness. 
in this term. How easy is it for you to forgive? How easy is it for you to ask for forgiveness? Jesus may present this dilemma in a much different perspective. One that may seem to be blasphemous for how is it I can forgive you? How is it I can ask for forgiveness? Jesus follows his proposition with asking the man to get up and go walk. And once again, 42 times, Mark uses the word immediately. Immediately, the man gets up and he walks. It's always that urgency of response that Mark demands. And they were all amazed and they glorified God saying, we've never seen anything like this. Now I've entitled the sermon for this coming week using that popular ad. What's your sleep number? For good sleep promotes healing. Too much sleep, lethargy. When you're sick, sick in bed, your muscles atrophy. Jesus' healing lifts the paralytic to a new life, a life that rises from the bed. Forgiveness awakens us every Sunday when we hear those words to go out and powerfully live forgiven. For it can be a matter of life and death. For guilt kills. Forgiveness offers life raising us from the rubble of guilt. We are called into the story, appropriately ascribed for Ash Wednesday, to participate fully in the forgiving and the receiving of forgiveness. So join me on this Lenten journey of healing. Amen. I invite you to join in the prayers of intercession as each petition ends. Lord, in your mercy, the congregation responds with, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, especially for those who are suffering or are in any affliction. Merciful God, you sent your Son to be our peace, to be our healer, to forgive Help all of those who suffer any pain or grief, hopelessness or anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, the healer of all, mercifully grant strength to the weak and comfort to those who suffer, that in their sickness and pain they may be turned into health. We especially pray for Kathy and Carl, Gibb, and all family and friends of Lori, family and friends of Matt S. 
Pam R, Diane and Peter H, Sean R, Rebecca Z, friends and family of Chuck P, Kathy, and all of those whom we name silently before you at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and reconciliation, bring an end to the sickness of this world, especially violence, terrorism, war, and their causes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, Holy One, your Son forgave all of us so that we might be one in unity with the Holy Spirit. May the gift of baptism be a power of healing for the church's brokenness and bless all efforts for renewal and Christian unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, mend broken relationships, bring peace to families, to our congregation, to this community, to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we bring these intercessions before you, knowing that you will hear us as you have promised, and will answer according to the mercy shown in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, you, you walk beside us in desert places, and, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Lord. Amen. We prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess silently before God our sin in the presence of God and of one another. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to get the elements out before you as we prepare for our service of communion. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures forever from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safety through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness and to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out unto all nations. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he gave thanks and he gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us 
send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. I invite you now to take your elements, the wafer or the bread that you have, the body of Christ given for you. You may eat of the bread. I invite you to take the wine or the grape juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through the gift of faith toward you and in love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. The God of all consolation bless you in every way, grant you hope all the days of your life, restore you to health and grant you salvation. Fill your heart with peace and lead you to eternal life. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.